Hey guys, um, ignore the messy bed, it's been a long day. Basically, I just want to tell you guys what it's like to walk the runway for Canada's top and emerging designers all in one place in Toronto, and it's called Toronto Men's Fashion Week. So the way that I got into Tom was through Western Cheerleading. On early October of 2015, the Western Cheer team followed the Western football team to U of T for a night game at the Varsity Blues Stadium. We won 58 to two, go Stangs. And my mom lives in Toronto, so after the game, she asked if I wanted to grab drinks with her and her friend named Julia. So we ended up grabbing drinks at the Shangri-La Hotel. So we get there and she's standing next to the founder of Toronto Men's Fashion Week, Jeff Rustia. And he's got his whole posse with him too. Like he's with this guy named Hans, who's this big model organizer for shows in Milan, Paris, New York, uh, Toronto Men's Fashion Week. So we're just all talking and drinking and stuff, getting to know each other. And in the middle of the night, Jeff Rustia says, I want you to walk for me. At this point, I was like, holy shit, like, okay. Like, after finding out that he was the creator of Toronto Men's Fashion Week, I was basically waiting for him to say those words all night. And then he said it, and I was like, holy shit. But, like, what came out was like a, oh, yeah, sure, like, whatever, if I can, you know, whatever, if I got time. So I go back to school, and a couple months later, I find myself at the casting call for all the male models. And there was probably about 50 other models, and maybe 25 execs. And there was even a girl there, too. Like, she was auditioning. So we all signed in, we signed waivers, we got our body measurements, and we took shirtless pictures so they could get like an idea of our figure for the designers. Um, and even the girl had to go shirtless too, like that was kind of weird. And to be honest, I felt pretty nervous at the casting because everyone there was so tall. Like, I was looking up at everyone. Um, the, the minimum cutoff is six feet, and I'm just six feet. So, you know, in my group of friends, I'm like relatively tall, but there, everyone's like, 6'2", and you're, I just felt so small. I was among the smallest group of guys there. It was pretty intimidating. But I said, screw it, you know, I just gotta give it my all, I gotta be confident, strut my stuff, because I thought to myself, if any one of them could get it, then there's a chance that I can get it too. So over the next few days, all the models were waiting for emails from the designers saying which ones they wanted, and the email would give them the fitting location and time. So basically how it happened was, you would get the email, and you would go to this room, wherever they were, wherever they wanted to do the fitting, and you would strip down to just your underwear, and you would sit on a bunch of chairs and everyone would face the front room, and then the designer would walk up and down the line of chairs and just handpick who he wants for his line. And there was about 20 to 25 guys there, and only about 15 to 20 would make it. So I made a lot of friends at Tom, because it's really just a big group of guys, we're all having fun, we all just want to rock designer clothing and walk the runway and have our little moment, but none of us take it too seriously. So, you know, it's really just like, tell them the boys. So Tom is split into five days. You have the opening night, you have three days of runway, and then you have the closing night. And each of the five nights will have its own after party and Tom will rent out an entire club just for all the guests and the models and stuff. So each night you'll have interviews, booths, bars, catering, lounges, like anything for the guests to socialize and meet other people and see what Tom is all about. And, and this is so that it's not just runway, you know, there's other things to do, there's more to see, you know, guests can kind of explore around and learn about new things that they didn't know about or, or try new products. Actually this year, they had hairstylists cutting the hair of the guests. So you'd see guests getting their hair cut before the show. So the runway is shaped like a T. So you have the short top part here and that's the entrance and exit. And then you have the long runway where you walk down and the top of the T, there's a big TV screen and it'll play whatever the creative team of the designer wanted to put for the background of their line. So you enter from one side of the T, you walk down the runway, um, there's chairs all along the sides, you have celebrities, fashion lovers, uh, other designers, um, some photographers, and just anyone who really wants to attend the show. So you walk down the T, hit the end, and then at the end, there's a bunch of photographers there ready to take that like head on shot. And then you turn around, go back up the T towards the TV and exit the other side. So the morning of the first runway show, there's a mandatory model meeting and we all meet at the venue and we basically get the lowdown of where the runway is in relation to everything, how we're gonna enter and exit. And we also get taught the different formations for the finale of each designer you'll have one model walking out at a time and it's slightly staggered so you'll have as one's going down the long end of the T another one's coming back and then at the end all the models will come out at the same time doing one of a few formations so one of them was a, called a mob scene and that was where all the models just kind of rush out at once 
and it's just a, it, there's no formation to it there's no specific lines you just all walk out you're a big fashion mob and then everyone stops at the end turns around and walks back out another one is called the fountain where models walk in a single line all the way to the top and as you get to the end one will go left and go back down the side and the other one will go right down the side just like a fountain so it's pretty easy i mean you're literally just walking there were these huge speakers that were set up uh, just all around Tom and they would be absolutely blasting music of whatever song choice the designer wanted for their run. The speakers literally shake the building, like it's, it's absolutely insane. So my first walk was actually pretty easy. I mean, really all you gotta do is have a, a serious model face, don't yawn, trips, fall, or sneeze, walk 30 meters down the runway, walk back, and that's it. It's like so easy, there's nothing to it at all. I did mess up in my first year, I was carrying a handbag and this lady was sitting just outside the runway and I guess I got pushed out kind of far because the other model was coming like close to my side. So I'm walking towards the TV about to exit and I smacked this girl's leg with my handbag and it was really embarrassing. I literally was like, oh shit, it's gonna happen. I hit it and I just kept walking. I was like, fuck it man, I can't go back. And I loved it. I mean like the music is super loud. You're looking so fly in the designer clothing and the makeup and whatever hair they give you. You get into your zone and then it's just all these cameras flashing and you feel untouchable. Just imagine being the center spotlight of everything in the room and just cameras flashing everywhere and everyone's looking right at you and you're just like, yeah, this is me, like, check it. So you get undressed and then you go back to the model waiting room and you just wait for the next show and that's it. It's pretty easy. And you had to be there three hours before your show and you just wait for like the first two hours doing absolutely nothing. And within an hour to an hour half of your show, you'll get hair and makeup done. But it's not so bad because if you have shows every hour, you're not really stopping. You're kind of just on to the next one. So it's pretty, it's pretty quick. So shows ran every hour and this allowed models to get ready for the next show if they just got off one. And it also let the audience members go grab a drink and socialize and stuff in between shows. So on the last day of the runway shows, I was just leaving the building to go home and I ran into this guy named Sean Mark, who is my current modeling coach, and he said he wanted to work with me. So we exchanged information and he got me an interview with Plutino, who I'm now currently signed with. So my second season of Tom was even better because I got to reunite with all my friends. I saw the same designers again. Actually, my favorite designer, she was so funny. Her name is Jordan. She's the designer for Hendrix Row. And she's very spunky, very fun, very like energized. And she actually fed us tequila shots right before we ran the runway. Then she gave us like this crazy pep talk. And just in general, you feel more comfortable and open with everyone because it's not your first time anymore. You kind of know the ropes, you know everyone there. You can kind of like relax a little more. So it was a lot of fun. And at the closing party for my second season, I was chosen with a bunch of other models to be a live model for the after party. In the lounge area, there was these blocks surrounding the main dance area, and we would just stand there and model the clothes while everyone's partying and drinking. And it's at this after party where I met my Saga City friend, Thomas Daria, who's a model actor in Toronto. Actually, Thomas and I just started a movie together as background extras, but it was really cool actually, because in the scene that we shot together, it was both of us as background extras in the forefront of the scene. And then Anna Kendrick was right behind us. And then there was three other actors behind us. So we had a really, really good exposure. And it was funny that we could kind of both be from Saga and kind of share that moment of like publicity, I guess. So for my would-be third season of Tom, I chose not to walk. And that's because it was right in the middle of exams. So I was basically weighing, rescheduling my exams and making the commute versus the unpaid work of Tom. And I've already done Tom once, so I had a bit of exposure. I was signed at this point, so I was kind of like, okay, maybe I don't need to. Yeah, by the way, Tom is actually unpaid. It's all volunteer, but because you get so much exposure, right? But if a designer specifically wants you, they can message you and say, hey, I want you to walk for me. I'll give you like X amount of money to walk for me and Tom. And originally I wasn't gonna walk for Tom for my fourth season, but I had to make an exception because my modeling coach, Sean, got me a fitting for the brand Collar, which is my favorite brand. If you watch the vlogs, you know what I'm talking about. Come the night of the show, I actually got major butterflies. And I think it was because I was like so excited and kind of nervous because it was such a big deal to me that I was kind of getting the jitters. So yeah, that's basically what it's like to walk for Tom. I mean, it's a really good experience. You know, you get a lot of exposure, you make a lot of friends. Generally for male models, if you're not signed going into Tom, by the time Tom is done, you'll be signed. Because there's so many photographers there, there's scouts there, everyone's looking for fresh faces, right? So generally, Tom is a starting point for a lot of male models in Canada. For me, Tom was my entry point technically into modeling because that's where Sean found me and then I got to Butino. So I'm really grateful for everything that happened, you know, all the events that led up to that point. 
you know, everything kind of worked itself out to get me where I am today. So if you're thinking about walking for Tom, go and follow their Instagram or Facebook page because they will upload a picture or a file or something saying when the casting call is for the models for the winter, fall or the summer, spring season, whichever one it is. And you just go to the casting call. That's it. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, hope that helped. Stepped inside, they staring like they know the face. Broke. And then it was. And then it was. <laughs>